In December 1972, the Apollo 17 mission took men to the moon. During this mission, several records were broken, including the longest walk in space. In an attempt to bring humans to the environment of the moon, NASA will embark on the Artemis II mission. Also, for a future Artemis lunar landing mission, NASA has chosen SpaceX's Starship. Watch this video to the end for details. First, the successful launch of NASA's Artemis I rocket moves mankind closer to a lunar landing. After many setbacks brought on by engine issues, fuel leaks, and Mother Nature forcing the agency to reschedule due to tropical storms, NASA's Artemis I mission has finally launched. The Space Launch System, NASA's most potent rocket to date, and the Orion crew capsule are flying together for the first time, with this mission officially kicking off the agency's Artemis program, which seeks to return humans to the moon. Before this most recent and successful launch attempt. NASA was doubtful whether the rocket would take off. The liquid hydrogen replenishment valve on the launch tower had a leak, which required some time to fix by tightening the nuts surrounding it. The radar that was supposed to track the rocket launch also needed to be fixed by the US Space Force because it abruptly stopped working. Finally, the ground crew stopped the hydrogen leak, and the Space Force discovered that a faulty Ethernet switch was to blame for the radar malfunction. The final occasion Artemis 1 was delayed by NASA was when the launch had to be postponed by roughly an hour. SLS was launching from its launch pad at 1.50 a.m. Eastern Time. A few minutes later, the Orion capsule successfully deployed its solar arrays, and the core stage's engines were shut off so that it could separate and crash into the Atlantic Ocean. The rocket's second stage will then start its engine to launch Orion on a course for the moon. It will eventually separate as well, leaving the crew vehicle to travel around the moon for four weeks before returning to Earth. NASA will receive the information it needs from Artemis 1 to ensure that astronauts can safely go to the moon in the Orion space spacecraft. Additionally, the agency will have the chance to assess whether the spacecraft's thermal shield will adequately safeguard the astronauts inside when it re-enters our atmosphere and splashes into the Pacific Ocean. If all goes according to plan, NASA can begin preparations for Artemis II, which will be Orion's first crewed mission, and send people on a flyby of the moon. Next, let's discuss NASA's Artemis II mission, taking humans around the moon. Aiming to return people around the moon for the first time since 1972, Artemis II will launch and splash down once the unmanned Artemis 1 has completed its mission. Launching the crew on an eight-day journey will be accomplished by Artemis 2 using the massive Space Launch System, SLS Mega Rocket, and Orion spacecraft. The astronauts and mission controllers will gather data on Orion and the crew's performance to determine whether the Artemis program is ready to deliver people to the moon's surface. The launch of Artemis 2 is anticipated for 2024, but that is subject to the availability of a few components. On November 16th, from Launch Complex 39B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Center in Florida. Artemis 1 was successfully launched by NASA at 1.47 a.m. EST, 0647 GMT. The mission will gather engineering and radiation data to determine whether the SLS and Orion spacecraft is ready to carry people. Following Artemis 1, if it succeeds in completing its mission, from launch to splashdown, next will be Artemis 2. The crew expedition will require brand new spacesuits that are made to withstand the radiation-rich cislunar environment as opposed to low Earth orbit, where astronauts are better protected. NASA is now assembling key components components of the Artemis II hardware as of August 2022 in preparation for testing and assembly later in the process. Who will fly on Artemis II and what will it do? Although the Artemis II crew members have not yet been indicated, we know there will be four of them. In 2022, NASA announced that its astronaut corps would be qualified to participate in Artemis missions. An astronaut on this flight will also go to the Canadian Space Agency. In addition to not having named its Artemis II crew member, the CSA has four astronauts available. After committing to support Support NASA's human lunar program with robotics, Canada was granted an astronaut slot. To aid in research and lunar landing missions, NASA intends to build the Gateway Space Station, which will be in lunar orbit. Using artificial intelligence to enable some autonomous operations, Canada's Canadarm3 will perform repairs and maintenance on Gateway. NASA plans personnel gaps, so AI will be especially important when the station is unmanned. This strategy differs from the ongoing human presence on the International Space Station, but is required for logistical and financial reasons. The SLS and Orion spacecraft system's first significant test with people aboard will be Artemis II. According to the Canadian Space Agency, mission planning, system performance, crew interfaces, and guidance and navigation systems are the four main readiness indicators that the mission will strive to meet. According to NASA, Orion
Orion will travel along the mission path, orbiting the planet twice in a maneuver designated as a hybrid free return to gain speed for the translunar injection. To achieve a direct return to Earth, Orion will swing around the moon on a free return trajectory. Depending on the mission's goals, the mission may last up to three weeks, but it is anticipated to last eight to ten days. If the new mission achieves its anticipated maximum altitude of 5,523 miles, 8,889 kilometers, above the moon's surface, the four people on Artemis II will have traveled the farthest from Earth since 1970's Apollo 13. According to the European Space Agency, the mission must reach the following benchmarks. It must launch to low Earth orbit from Launch Pad 39B at the NASA Kennedy Space Center. It must also raise the perigee, the lowest Earth orbit, about 40 minutes after launch. This will be done utilizing the SLS Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, ICPS. Also, at 42 hours into the mission, the system should be checked to ensure the orbit, which is 1,616 miles, 2,600 kilometers in altitude, at its greatest point and 112 miles, 185 kilometers at its closest point to Earth, is accurate. Orion will perform a translunar injection to travel to the moon when the ICPS is destroyed. The spacecraft will return to Earth. When the spacecraft gets near Earth, the crew module will disengage from the European Service Module and the Crew Module Adapter, enabling a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. For investigators, data analysis for Artemis II will take at least a few months. If everything goes according to plan, the Artemis III landing mission will touch down on the Moon's surface in 2025. However, the schedule has drawn doubt from the Office of the Inspector General at NASA. Technical and regulatory issues have caused delays in developing the human landing mechanism, which will utilize SpaceX's Starship. Additionally, there were delays in creating the space suits that NASA was producing. To cover the void, the organization has turned to commercial suppliers. The first human landing mission since NASA's Apollo 17 in 1972 will occur in 2025, assuming Artemis 3 touches down on the surface. The second crewed Artemis lunar landing by NASA will use SpaceX's Starship. The second group of astronauts will travel to the moon on SpaceX's Starship lunar lander thanks to NASA's decision to increase the company's involvement in the Artemis program. Remember that the agency chose SpaceX's human landing mechanism for Artemis 3, which will re-enter humankind's orbit around the moon decades after the final Apollo mission. To maintain redundancy in services, NASA announced earlier this year that it was inviting fresh lunar landing proposals for use after Artemis 3. Although SpaceX was not permitted to participate, the government did announce that it intended to exercise an option under its current contract and requested that the business change its landing technology to comply with new criteria for its lander to transport people from Earth to the moon using the Gateway Station, which has yet to be set up in lunar orbit. As humans work to establish a permanent presence on the moon, NASA can employ this enhanced lander for upcoming missions. In its announcement, NASA stated that this new effort is part of option B, and it aims to create and demonstrate a Starship lunar lander that satisfies NASA's sustaining criteria for missions after Artemis 3, including docking with Gateway housing four crew members, and delivering greater mass to the surface. The revised SpaceX deal with NASA will cost an additional $1.15 billion on top of the original $2.9 billion sum. In 2025, astronauts are anticipated to go to the moon for the first time on the company's Starship Lunar Lander. However, the agency is anticipating a launch delay for Artemis 3 to 2026, as NASA Inspector General Paul Martin acknowledged in August. According to his statement, NASA anticipates delays in creating its next-generation space suits in the human landing system. The earliest that NASA's Artemis IV mission, which will send four more humans to the moon, will launch is in 2027. I will probably not be on the trip around the moon, but I am excited about the future Artemis III mission. Let us know if there are topics you would like us to feature. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel to know about other things that NASA is up to. Thank you for watching.